Well, that was a close one, but T1, they managed to close that out and lead the Series 1-0 against EDG. I'm your host, Ying Su, and I'm joined by Bren and Josh uh, once again. Uh, they killed my hopes and dreams, but I'm kind of okay with it. It was, it was a pretty good map. Yeah, it was a yeah. really good map. I mean, I think Panzer used the word bloodbath, and I think that summed it up really well. Yeah, I it told you they rolled the D20, by the way. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. Doing, man. yeah. They're all over the place. They, it was a really high-tempo game that... Both teams played their defense by just trying to adapt and react to what their opponents were doing instead of trying to impose their will upon the game. So it ended up being really crazy. There were huge individual moments too, just scattered throughout, like big rounds where the economy just went in completely the opposite direction. I mean, speaking of those big rounds and big moments, uh, I think Sire coming into this, uh, I know a lot of people are pretty hyped to see what he can do. And I mean, he was dragging them through the mud, Brent, to yeah. try and get them over the line. Play like a man possessed. I mean, the guy was locked in with some of these moments. Moments. I mean, Josh, you were highlighting, you know, those individual moments, that magic that was on our screen. A lot of it coming from Sire player. I mean, so many times. I believe on the first half as well, ending, I believe it was 19 kills. Oh, right. And yeah. at some point, you know, he just like got over the 20 mark and he it just kept going. Early. It just kept going. Yeah, he, he was did. feeling it. And he was saving them even in situations like he won the, the he got a 4K in a round to stop them from being thrifty. He managed to help them thrifty by getting three with a Guardian. Like huge, huge moments. I think this is the one where he saves them with the Bulldog, right? I mean, they've just won the pistol. And if Sire doesn't pull out a 4K here, then suddenly the economy has been swapped over again. And I think part of the reason he's playing like a demon is because the last <laughs> time he was on the stage, he failed, right? The team that he was with didn't have the experience and they went zero and two. This was the top team from America's at the time at Masters Reykjavik. Yeah. And they weren't able to perform, and now he's back with a vengeance. Yeah, it's been that stain on his record, you know, trying to get that first international win. Uh, and I mean, there's parallels there between the team that he's also playing against. Yep. We've talked to death about China and trying to get their first win at these international events. And they came so close in terms of that map as well to try and get over that hurdle initially. But it's also a side player who they're having to contend with. And like you said, he's playing with a vengeance. The guy is locked in. He's hitting almost impossible shots and salvaging rounds that really should be going the way of Edward Gaming. I think you can extend that to the rest of his teammates as well. I know uh, Munchkin, he did win one game but that was a while ago uh same for zeta he won uh, some games at cloud yeah. night but that was i think 2021 Champs, 20 long yeah. time ago. it has been a long time since this team has like savored success <laughs> on the international stage and they'll be hungry for it ah yeah and speaking of a hungry munchkin let's check him out here for the verizon <laughs> high i was that was a good segue right, right, right. Was the good. verizon was high speed moment thank you bren uh but yeah there, what, was Ooh, what was this what was this this was filthy that's what it was filthy disgusting <laughs> <laughs> The adjustment. Yeah, I mean the adjustment as well, the crosshair placements. It's everything there. came together. It's okay, so round two, Kang Kang swaps the economy around with an insane play. Then round eight, Munchkin does the same. Later on, second half, Sire player does it. Like there were so many moments where individuals were able to have their impact in this. And that's the style when you play this like fast, aggressive tempo. Yeah. It just creates awesome moments in the match. I also wonder if they do prac against EDG, because obviously DRX are talking about how they prac against, yeah. against ASC uh, loads of times, so maybe uh, they're just better prepared for it than we yeah, The potential's there as well, but I mean, like you were saying, Josh, they, you know, when you play against a team like Edward Gaming, it, it's not like they drag you down to their level, but you're almost forced to play up to the same pace as them and the same cool. speed. And then those amazing moments do come through. There wasn't much in terms of the way of like counter striding as much, I would say, in this. Yeah. They were pretty ready for some of the stuff that Edward Gaming is going, but Edward Gaming is the kind of team where they got a deep enough play. Why, why do you can, like insist on saying Edward, Edward Gaming, Gaming every because, single because time? Edward Edward Gaming. Edward but instead of Gaming. what about yeah. EDG? No, I like throw Edward that Gaming. in. I like every... the full name Edward Gaming. What does what yeah? does the D stand for in EDG? Dwood. Yeah. Dwood. Yeah. Dwood. Dwood. Edward Dwood, Dwood Gaming. Yeah. No. Ed no. Dwood Gaming. <laughs> no. I feel like that sounds better. No, it doesn't sound better. Better than Bren Esports. <laughs> don't insult Bren Esports. That actually exists as well. Uh, but let's talk about the second map. Uh, map one, that was the choice of T1, of course. We are moving on to uh, EDG's home ground now. They chose this. Bren, how much of a buff uh, are we seeing here? Well, this is an interesting pick as well because I think T1 have fixed a lot of their mid-rounding issues on this map before they used to just go all in on executes. They were very obvious of where they were, where they were trying to play on Haven. Um, and Edward Gaming also play a bit of a nerfed comp. Like they run Cypher instead of the Killjoy. Yeah. The Nano Swarms are pretty pretty important, I would say, in terms of the executes, using the Nano Swarms inside smoke so nobody can try and fl uh, flood into you and fight into you. And the Cypher, does, it doesn't give you as many options, I would say, as well, when you're trying to play those retakes. Yeah, you're really reliant on that getting value. So the comp they play is a little bit more 
like I said, nerfed, and they're going up against T1. And I do wonder if that's just going to be faulting them here. It is their map pick. Maybe they're cooking something up. Maybe they've been saving something. Maybe they're going to adjust something as well. But yeah, yeah it's I mean, when even Nats doesn't play Cipher on this map, you know that's when you know. You know it's time to play Killjoy. Yeah. I feel that that's the that's the bar, right? Yeah. That's the bar. And uh, speaking of the second map, let's send this down to Golden Boy, who I think is with uh, the coach of EDG. I think. All right, so I'm here with Coach After. Obviously, tough loss on that one, but what are you guys looking to change and you know implement going into map number two to get the win? Uh, so first of all, uh, we are very confident about our map 2, our map select in game 2. So definitely, as long as we can play our own strength and just play normally, don't get panic, and then we can definitely take the, take the victory in the game 2. Well, if there's one thing I know about EDG, they're going to bring that strength. We're excited for that one. Back to you guys over at the desk. I mean, confidence is something that I feel like they don't lack. Uh, but if they can believe themselves a little bit more for this map, I don't see why they wouldn't take a map over TY. I think they could have on the first one. Absolutely. I think this is... A, we, we were talking about it being a hot take that EDG were going to get out of this group, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible for them to win a match, right? Like, actually... There, there you go! You know Edward. what? No, Who Edward. is Edward? Also, I want to know where Faker is. Yeah, but... Where is Faker? <laughs> Edward's more important than Faker. No. Yes, he is. No. Yes, he is. <laughs> calm yeah. off it, calm off it. Uh, but let's take a look at the Prime Gaming agent select. I will let you carry on and see if uh, we get that cypher or not. I'm, I'm sure we will. I, I think so. I mean, Chishu is also such an important player. There he is. Yeah, okay. With the cypher. He, he was such an important player for them, being in the clutch towards their, I mean, run in China, but also when they played a lock-in against 100 Thieves. So I'd like to see him activated. I just think it'll be difficult when T1 have a focus on breaking his utility, which people in China don't do as much. Yeah, they don't really do the mid-rounding as much the, the exploration towards Garage on Haven where they're trying to break, you know, any cycle trips or whatever, you know, the Killjoy turret. Uh, and T1 are really firing off. I mean, both of these teams are heavy hitters currently. It feels like you're getting the best out of a lot of the individuals. And if it does come down to that again, it could be close. Edward Gaming, they must have picked this map for a reason. I would like to see that evolution of their play on this comp as well, because they could honestly just steal stuff from Liquid's playbook. Liquid used to play the cycle comp all the Wait, so, Long time ago. So Liquid is not Team Liquid, but EDG is Edward Gaming. I see. Why are you, why are you taking it. issues with Yeah, I, I mean, if Liquid were called on. Edward Liquid, we would call them <laughs> Edward Liquid. Okay? I, I, we just, I, I we want just them to name. rebrand. We just yeah. like the name. There are things that they can change with their way that they play this comp as well that can be the next evolution to make it even better as trap well. Trap plays, you know. A trap plays with a cam or using the cages for the retake, exactly. I, the thing that I'm interested to look for in this map, though, I, I'm just going to take it very simple, zug zug. Valorant. I am looking at the Jet head-to-head. -head. And part of the reason is because both of these guys had like 20 kills at the half on Fracture. Yep. So Sire is going to get his chance to pick up where Ban left off, go over to Jet and face up against Kankan. Kan. We know that Haven is about using double initiator utility to empower your Jets. Yeah. I keep it simple. I'm a simple bloke. I just want to watch <laughs> Jets click heads. Yeah. Just sometimes it comes down to Listen, sometimes Helicopter player? You know the you know the origin of that? I have no idea what you're Fire player's about. nickname is <laughs> Helicopter Player because when he's playing Jet, he updrafts and spins. Incredible. Yes, there we go, there we go. Uh, but let's see, that though. Is awesome. Let's see if we're going to get some Helicopter Player Pansy and Hypoc. I'm excited for this one. <laughs> I guess I'm learning new things as well about helicopter players. But you know what, that aside, uh, maybe a little bit more towards this is the composition. It's definitely caught my eye, Mike. Um, how are we feeling about the Cypher in play? Is that going to change your perspective? Or are you taking uh, faith in results? I, mean, I, I, always, I always ride on the Cypher is the good counter to the Jet. The, for me, it shifts the emphasis towards potentially a raise or a Sova. So in this regard, it's data really to be the one to allow freedom for the Jet, honestly. Sure. They have to deal with this utility, especially if T1 are going to try and, what I expect to do, match the pace that they did from map one, because in terms of the map record over EDG, this is terrifying for T1 to come in against. Again, EDG's wins, majority of them are like plus seven, plus eight yeah. round differential. So this is a very comfortable map for EDG to come into. And I think they will adopt that same pace. T1 can't let this slip away early on in the half and, and find themselves in a round deficit. No, I, I think you've kind of summarized it well. I mean, the coach reiterated that too in that lovely little interview we had down there with GB and the coach 
kind of discussing that they are comfortable in map two. Obviously, the standard, we're going to play our own game. I don't love it when you know, players and teams say that. It's like, well, we're going to play well, the opponent's game. <laughs> I don't know. You're going to play your own game on, on a map that you're 6-0 on. Yes, um, and it does look good for them. So we're going to find out if they can truly rekindle some of that kind of spark from map one. They haven't taken it too heavily because that would have been a souring loss as well. Close enough to make it feel competitive for the loss at the end there. Now, T1 will be trying to hold back EDG who get to set the pace on that attacking side. And really, my eyes go towards Smoggy once again on this breach. And not massively concerning, but EDG can pivot back towards finding a little more value from that utility or giving Kang Kang something else, not that he needs it, to build upon. I like this lean back towards B, though. Oh, the timing. That could have been devastating, but Kang Kang, now the timing's great. Gets to dip away as well, unable to be traded there. Zeta left in the dust of that. Beautiful. And still, shoulders for more. This guy, the timing is so good, corralling them to the back of Garage. But you're right, Van does find two. So suddenly this round becomes a little bit more competitive than it was. Sire Player still alive. Chichu, the range on his frenzy apparently is wild. Sire Player needs them clean, and they ain't. EDG, good start here. Talk me through that start, though, that beginning of the round. Well, uh, this feels crazy that T1, without the investment of the Killjoy utility towards Garage, they obviously note the dark coming in. Uh, there's no, there's nothing in there to, to kind of confirm presence from EDG, but T1 kind of just turned their backs to it. As soon as this pressure comes through onto B side, Kang Kang in a position to find so much freedom. And uh, really bizarre if you're going to make that sort of adjustment in what you'd expect to see from a Killjoy setup here, particularly on the pistol. Yeah, there was a mistake made, and you can see what can happen. You leave that gap open for just a second, gets exploited quick. This time, Sire Player looking to challenge Kang Kang. This guy doesn't stop. Again, going to take down Sire Player. Just smiling and nodding on the player cam <laughs> as well. And C1. We've got uh, Sheriff on ban. Beyond that, it is just classic. So, he's. Did he just tag him as well? Yeah. Right. Right, fair enough. No, that's perfectly reasonable, Can Can. Yeah, fall away. He's looking for another. <laughs> the way this guy plays. It's just ridiculous to watch, isn't it? Oh, he's let him off. Look at the spacing on the minimap. It's <laughs> just him. He's it's <laughs> only him. He's charging him down with a marshal. We're in, we're in Mars, guys. Can Can, you can't be doing this. This is Masters Tokyo, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's another situation where he's got a blade storm within the first three rounds. Well, within the first two rounds, I should say. I'm sorry, he just went hunting with a marshal. So at the moment you look at the minimap there, there's, there's nobody with him. He, he's just, I mean, I sort of like, yeah, right, mate, yeah we'll, we'll head on to seaside. Gonna yeah, gonna get it. Hold B. Anything happening over there? Nah, no, not much, no. Cut Got a blade storm, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, they get uh, a little bit of fun out of this, don't they? So, blade storm's there. For T1, a little bit of a welcome to map two, isn't it? He's still lurking around, isn't he? I think it, has he actually popped it? Now he has, okay. It's a little bit of paranoia to stop the sound cue here, surely for T1. That fracture round going to be stuck in the back of their minds. I'm not sure if they've noted Kan Kan's progress yet, because the dart, I think, connected to one behind. Stunned up. Okay, does get held back for now. It's going to be a little bit of a window of timing to maybe clear here. Let's see. Okay, nobody's done very well to find Munchkin. Gets to keep himself safe from the reveal there. And now looks for more. It's smoggy to find it, though. It's not just him. He's taken the space, yes. But the rest of his teammates are thriving in this. I have played the only one to really answer back here, cycling those weapons even further away, making it very difficult and giving them something to work with too. Now 3v3 with Chichu going down, this opens up an opportunity. This is when Kang Kang does need to come alive. He does get the tag, not the frag, gets the fall away. How long going to find Sire player? Good trade. No one to come back in on that either. One enemy remaining. I was going to say, does he find Smoggy? Just how on left. His position. Oh, it's bizarre. He's in no man's land. The HP is incredibly low. Ban. No way. There's, there's no way. There is no Surely way. Surely not. How long are you going to check that? Right, you're going to check that. No way. Does Ban get away with daylight robbery? 25 HP, balls of steel to sit inside the smoke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course you do that. Of course you do. Unthinkable. 
<laughs> he sticks this through. Come on. That is <laughs> wild. Oh man, we've just had some obscene rounds in this, haven't we? All right, this this is round four coming up. By the way, we've just seen some madness to begin with. Okay, <laughs> let's kind of bring this back in. Guardian out for Zeta. Bulldog with Munchkin. Three rifles beyond that. Sire so player has a limited lifespan, but can get away. Dash going to save him in this. Going to slip back into a little bit of a dirty angle here. We'll deal with the camera and. Uh, T1 looked to repeat this same sort of setup with Munchkin set up towards A. Oh, well, turret towards B, but it tasks Sire player to hold down garage and basically second mid with. Wow. <laughs> A lot of pressure behind it, but Chicha actually caught here on the retreat back towards window. How far this can get? About, about there. The timing's really nice for the trade. Swaggy keeps them competitive in this, and Munchkin has to dip away. A good attempt from Carpe to swing from the back of the side there to try and maybe alleviate the pressure on Munchkin. But he's back clearing this quite quickly. Does he get a chance to have a little look down long or does he even dare to go that far? They're worried Smoggy. about the back line. I was going to say, Smoggy's very tagged up, so he needs a second player here. It's going to be a third actually swinging through. EDG going to stack up as three. It's going to be another big round for Ban here. If he gets away with it, if he gets unseen. It's actually all Munchkin. Two big kills. And Ban wanted to try and help out there. Gets out of danger immediately and just falls away. Buys a couple of seconds to allow the Sire player to get towards the site. The plant will come in and I'm pretty sure no one's going to double check this hit. Nobody trying to maybe find out where Sire player is. Noted earlier towards Garage, but that's about all he knows. Nobody slipped away though. He's got himself towards Hell here. There's an opportunity. As said, knowing where Ban is is one thing. The second being Sire player is another! And it's a jump scare, but he seems unfazed. And now the 1v1. He knows Ban's on the side, he's close by, and nobody has... Whoa, ho, 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 Ban! Yeah, that confidence starting to brim with this player. Spins around and deals with him. Diffuse on the way, this time, no problems on the other side. Back to back as well from Ban. To close out rounds here and find the Diffuse. This one a little different. On the other side. Fox to try and buy time for that smoke, or for one smoke to come back online, and Sire. Feels a little desperate with that drop into hell. And nobody plays this this timing perfectly to reposition. Yeah, definitely a chance for that one to go amiss. We'll see how proactive side player gets in this. Yeah, straight down C long. Uh, Paranoia was sent everything to invest into this. They're trying to close that map down hard. This puts so much pressure once again on Munchkin, though, soloing out this side. Smokes are in. I, I think he needs to fall back at this point. Yeah, it's just a little overwhelming here. Kang Kang going to clear through. No, it's nothing. There should be time for that plant to be on the way. Find time for this flank to come through as well. Two players of T1. Oh, on the back line. Zeta actually going to throw the Hunter's Fury through to More buy time. even further time. Yeah, lovely. Didn't catch that cross there. I thought maybe could have tagged that Pao Dong on that, but not to be. But the flank is in quick. The map is feeling small here. Down to a quarter of it. The Sire player, the first to take those couple of pressure steps forward. Joined by Carpe, going to try and pressure towards Long. He's got a challenger, though, on the other side. Vulnerable. Nobody had the bow to hand. And how long? Actually, a little too close for this. Swings in, doesn't find Munchkin. Munchkin finds him. And now down to Chi Chu and Smoggy. How much can you achieve? Not enough here. Chi Chu already tagged up, already spotted. The fuse started, and Sire player perfect on the way back in. T1 looking very decisive here. I've got their footing in terms of ultimates coming online. A couple of rifles bought into this, yes, but a broken purchase. Still, the game plan visible from the get-go, conceding the space. Munchkin doesn't necessarily buy a lot of time or value with his utility, but even so, Sire and Carpe on the flank, making things a little easier for T1 on the way back through. G2, by the way, forced into a corner all the way on long. Never tries to shut down this flank right towards sewers. Actually, you can see there the recon comes through. I think nobody's expecting it to be way back in lobby. Chi Chu's not shouldering that after the camera's removed. A lot of an error maybe occurring. Now, looking at the buy they've got coming out here, there's not much to it. You've got that one rifle with Smoggy. The rest of EDG scraping together what they can, a couple of light armors here and there, but. This is good for T1, though, to kind of temper some of this early progress that was being made mostly by Kanga. I'm looking for the moment where they try and overwhelm Sire here in Garage, because there's definitely an opportunity. How long? Find the plant. 
back out. Doesn't actually get tagged up. Well, does now with the spam, but we'll be able to reset. The lockdown comes through, and it's a full 5v5 here. EDG have to try and make a move. They do. Choo Choo gonna find Ban that doesn't lock the chance to get through from Garage. But it's gonna be Smoggy still holding the back of this car. They could be holding this down though. The lockdown comes in. He gets taken off it though. Diffuse held away for now and Choo Choo's position does get noted. But at least get the farm. No, Munchkin gets back to business. Diffuse gonna come through. And it's perfect work at the end from T1, but they lost so much on the way to that. Absolutely, it comes down to just Munchkin left standing. And Chi Chu, forced all the way onto C site, by the way, to avoid yeah, the lockdown. Yeah, he all the way around, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. I think even there, yeah, I just miss yet. Yeah, Chi gets a kill in the mix. Smoggy caught by the lockdown, detained. Nonetheless, T1 close out. A fourth defuse, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so EDG taking this, oh, every single round. Right down to the wire. But need to start converting some of these positions. T1 holding the lead right now. Only two rounds, yes, but four defusals. Got to feel a little rough for EDG. Maybe a pace change here. The rifles are out. We've got a couple of alts to play with as well for EDG. Good amount of utility as well. So they've got what they need. They've been getting themselves towards the site, as I said. They've been getting the plants, as you noted. But it's that next step of holding in those post plants. Those retakes have been delightful to witness from T1. Yeah, a little messy in the last, but prior to that, we've been just converting them. Still high tempo of its own variety, but Munchkin going for a little bit of a look here. What happened to the cat with all that curiosity, but he's got Carpe by his side. Is the timing right? Does the contact come in? Munchkin takes a look and he wins it. He gets to fall away and that's devastating. How on down, where are your smokes? Where's your chance towards There's that right now? Swing on that. There's three players stacked towards Long and Chichu all the way back in lobby. It's a question we'll talk about after this round concludes. Is Kankan going to get towards the site? He gets a free kill towards Munchkin, essentially. No follow-up, though. Zeta there to fill the void, but do they know nobody on the site already? No, not at all. Nobody gets away with it. And then Smoggy's got the follow-up, too, this time. Favorable numbers. Maybe this time they can win that post-plant conversion. Taking their time, though, here. I know exactly Lots to work with. Neural Death going to come through, but a paranoia, a dash, two cloud bursts for Sire. Hey. To work on the way back through to his dash Yeah, he, he is. Paranoid landed as well, but he's going to come out of it about now. Smoggy does take down. Bam! Sire player falls. Smoggy with a critical round there for EVG. And once they get this clean first blood, Munchkin resets back into a position that Smoggy's fault lined a couple of times now. I mean, at that point, you want to see Munchkin playing back towards site, even towards hell, or completely off. They have numbers advantage, and it's held on the fall, so. That execute feels a little weaker. You basically just want to wait out Kang Kang. He's the only one that can create space with no smokes here. And it's such a telltale sign of how close this has been, considering that now, even after those four in a row, one loss, and they're back down to very little money here for T1. Just the Marshall and Sheriff with, a, well, I think, a classic thrown in for Zeta, and that's about it. So it can be hard to deal with. So I play with an opportunity early on, but couldn't quite convert towards the kill. We all need a hobby. Maybe let's focus on the game. Yeah, it's going to be a free C site, but we're looking at the back line. Here, the Chichu, does he get overwhelmed? Yes, that's a rifle now available. So who can that go into the hands of? Plants in. Smoggy brought back towards Long. And you T1 don't looking for those next steps. I was going to say, yeah, you don't want to see Carpe actually get a kill here because Rolling Thunder could be the catalyst for T1 to actually throw everything at this retake. But when do they get it started? Getting ahead. Dark goes in. Finds oh, going with place. the idea now, Lauren. Yep. Can can. Paranoia sent. They've got to make something off this. And they have. Garpe does have a kill and no instantaneous trade. Can can is going wild right now. And Garpe is just answering him in kind. But a 1v2, what are you meant to do about these last couple of players? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. It maybe feels like there might be a tech coming after that. Yeah. Dare I say it? Will it into existence? But mm. definitely looking a little frustrated with uh, what was going on there on the player camp. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that. And it's only really that the Kang Kang and nobody find kills here that I guess removes the possibility to invest that rolling thunder. Nothing? No 
timeout? I'll say nothing. Yeah, you, you kind of will then nope. exist. Well, well. Well. Get out of my way. Yeah, okay. Back to business though. Four to four. EDG close the gap once again. Instant intention towards that C site. Gonna put the likes of Ban on Red Alert. He's just gonna evacuate the site and probably the right choice at this point. EDG starting to explore elsewhere on the map here and T1 will be tested in different ways now. Early paranoia comes through. To what no end? swing on the back of it. Yeah, there was nothing to make of it. That, that was a little lackluster. And Kanki Kan goes walking. This time he's going to be found. Backline tested. This time flank is held. Chitru succeeds. That's Sire player gone. Now look towards Smoggy. And actually Munchkin, the turret's going to do enough to take down Smoggy. So we are into a 3v3. Calling back lights of Chichu towards the side because they're getting flooded. Munchkin's here. How long goes down? Nobody. The position not ideal. Handled. And now Chichu with it all to do. He's in trouble. Three players on the other side, but time is on his. And time is everything here. Diffuse going to get to at least halfway. He's going to find one. He needed more. And I don't think he's going to be able to deny it. He cannot. T1. The fuse gonna come through. She's two a million miles away from this, by the way. So the fact that he actually shuts down the flank, is able to get back in a position, but I think that's actually a big indicator for T1 to pile on the pressure onto site. They then know the numbers. But yeah, a little strange in terms of the, the paranoia investment here, especially if you have the rolling thunder. You can clear so much space there with just those two investments. Nonetheless, T1, a fifth defuse on the board. Mm. A fifth round on the board. <laughs> oh, he knows his lines. Reads them perfectly. Can Can going to take down Sire player, who's been basically in the pocket of this man the whole time. There are bodies behind this, but removing Sire player is huge. You're going to see T1 having to respect this. Slipping a little deeper towards A. Lady G can take their time. Feels almost incorrect to say that about them they never want to take their time but they can still over a minute to play with and they got that first pick so quick and yeah, no re-engage here from the side of t1 right there can't play drifting back behind default well, he might get caught with that fault line this time around has to deal with the dart as well doesn't actually get caught He's got a little bit of life to him yet, but Kankan's -Kan's on the site. Uh, Down so low, 5 HP, and now this, this is just Manic again! Carpe with a swing and a 2v2. This is, just seems ridiculous. I don't know how we're here. Save still alive. Where's the next oh. layer to this? Chichu finally swings through from Sewer. There's Ban in a 1v2. Paranoia 2 smokes and TP. Spike planted. Chichu sat just tucked in towards the corner. Howdong vulnerable on the site. The barrel shows! He didn't switch in time. Yeah, no. I don't even think he's about to clear that corner. Oh, Expecting both of them to be stacked up here. EDG convert here, tie things up. And the fun's starting to dwindle here for T1. Lockdown to play with, Ban has his ultimate, but... What they do settle on in terms of investment here. Zeta, <laughs> a frantic scramble to try and find another weapon, but... Awkward when the swing finally comes through from Sewers here. Just the Guardian in the hands of Sire. Operator okay. in hand for Kang Kang once again. <laughs> Sire player <laughs> is having such a problematic day at the office. How am I going to fill the gap that he left, unable to explore? Going to leave Carpe to it. And it's going to be Carpe to be the first victim of this. Still going to continue that progress towards A long as well in the meantime, too. Munchkin getting a caught drifting. Chichu doing well once again. But Sire player, that's not bad. Hold on. Bait him out a little here. How oh dong? He's going to be tagged up down to 51. Lucky to be stand. He goes again. That's audacious. And nobody <laughs> over delivering with the second there. Sata going to fall, unable to trade that kill that could have been critical, but now down to just ban. 1v3 with just a sheriff is a lot to ask of anyone. If he could do some more damage, though, that would be fantastic, but. Clashed up a few times for him, but this is a tall order. I mean, he gets a little play on this, right? Like, not much, but a little. They're both sitting towards Sewer. They've got a lot of utility. <laughs> but he can get a Time to closer. play with as well. Yeah, he can get a little closer here. Cover going up. Pops up the smoke, and he's dead. Okay, nobody in unison with Smoggy. Not going to let any real threat build of that. 6-5 now. Round, in round 12. Ultimates in favor of T1 here. Three of the Hunter's Fury, four of the Rolling Thunder, so probably won't see them, but... 
Blade Storm and Lockdown to work with here. Haldong does have his TP. DG looking as if they might explore to C once again, or at least Kang Kang's over there with the operator. <laughs> Maybe just going to swing on to this. I mean, they have been having some backline pressure coming in. Maybe not a bad idea. Yeah, we haven't seen him drift this way, but now he's got support. He's not alone by actually any means. He's brought two players with him as well. So, wait and see if Sanders come walking through. Yeah, definitely expecting pressure towards C Long. But with no attention drawn towards A, I doubt they're going to kind of pull the trigger on this. So, look and see if nobody can draw that interest. <laughs> Absolutely not now. Clean open up. Problem B in EDG. Look to pressure towards Ban. Ban's got the time around the smoking, but they're ahead of the smoke. Massive. And yeah, pick found. Ban's gone down. And the site's now pretty much available. Should note at least a little pressure from CT. So they know there's still players around, but they're going to have a plant on this. I'll play full you tell. The Blade Storm still to work with. Munchkin does have the lockdown. So an opportunity here for T1. Oh! Munchkin's fallen. Well, there what? goes a huge piece of the kit they could have brought into this. And you can tell how frustrated he was with that. A mistake made. And Chichu going to hold on to it with both hands. It's on Sireplay now. It's on Zayda. It's on Carpe. Zayda's done his work. Oh, there's another vulnerable target with a flash. Just going to catch Sire Player. And now T1 want to try and close that gap. But Tyler is running. Oh, Sire Player delivering well. Smoggy answers right back. Though the fuse is going to be started. And it ain't going to be stopping. He's got to deal with it. He goes. Sire Player. Perfect work. What an absolute fumble to not get the lockdown there. Re-swinging onto that angle, but Sire bails them out. A 6-6 half. The first time we've seen a 6-6 half on EDG's attack since March. Beautiful stuff. Wow. What an incredible first half, Mike. Kind of let's go bigger picture on this a little bit. This has been something I've been looking forward to. Another close game, just like map one. I can't wait to see where this goes. We love a close game, don't we? And you know what we love more? Kong Kong, I feel like, at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying all of it. Uh, Smoggy has been able to have a large performance too and keep EDG in it, but I agree. I feel like that should have been their round towards the end. We should probably be looking at a 7-5 half, and there was some miraculous stuff that happened earlier on. Yeah, I mean, so back and forth between them, but the numbers don't lie, do they? I mean, it's just as being the Jet players running away with it. Smoggy supported him, like you said as well, on top of that fact. But uh, Ban also being that player to watch for in terms of the amount of clutches he's been able to pull through. I, actually, I just cannot believe the Giga Chad that he is to stick this. Yeah. He just and stuck it. This was the beginning of them winning four retakes in a row, two of which were done by Ban in a situation where it's not really like a, you know, an obliterating retake. It's not like T1's retakes are fantastic. It's Ban just pulling them through in the clutch 1v1s. Yeah, this was a back-to-back -back as well, Brent, that he did this. Yeah, I mean, really just carrying them through. And again, speaks volumes in terms of him just chopping and changing his role all the time. He's playing Jet on the last map. Now he's playing the Omen for them as well. But this has been so far the first half. Two heavy hitters just taking shots at each other, man. I mean, just opening up. I feel like there's been, there hasn't been as much in terms of the nuance. There's been mistakes here and there, but it's just been that raw firepower that's been showcased. I am interested to see, though, like, okay, as Hypoc was saying, this is actually pretty unusual to see a 6 6 half where EDG have been kept in check. There were a couple of 1v1s that we just demonstrated where EDG could have made this an 8 4 half or something maybe even more dominant. So I feel like they're the team that's in the driving seat, it's theirs to throw away. Yeah, I mean, how do they come back from this? How do they come back from this? I mean, it's pretty even so far. They, they could still theoretically win it. I want to see some more layers in terms of what they can do to throw it out with a Cypher Kong. Well, let's see if we're going to get those layers. Pansy and Hypok, back to you. I think there's a quote that I think came from Shrek at one point about onions and layers. Are you a fan of Shrek? Yeah, I had no idea where you were going good, there. Good, good. Just, just like to carry Absolutely on Absolutely none. Well. <laughs> yeah, no worries, but we can go back to the topic of 6-6, six, six, right? It's a very close half. Now, map one was also 6-6. Six, six. We had an explosive second half on map one, so it kind of kept true to trend. But I think you highlighted it well, kind of the expectations have changed, knowing previous results here. Yeah, for sure. And you look at the timeline there in terms of uh, the nature in which T1 were closing out rounds was very impressive. I come back towards the composition discussion here mm. with Chichu. And ultimately, Zeta on the other side of things. His ability to shut down and mitigate damage or value from that utility. Again, I guess the second layer to that being Carpe. 
how well can he set up Sire once that utility is removed? And look at this trap. Uh, this is, yeah, a stark contrast to how T1 approach the defense yeah. to Garage. And the smoke's gone in, so they know they've lost that C site. He can check the camera if he wants. He already knows it. Now, does Munchie get a time of right himself? It's devastating. As soon as he looks away, EDG flood through of Garage. Now they want back towards the site. The spike is down, though, so T1 have got what they wanted from that. They don't opt to reset deep on this either. They're happy to take these engagements on site. Willing to brawl EDG is a dangerous game to play. And Sire player could be caught in a bit of no man's timing here. Forced to give away his position. And hold himself up, but actually got to go further. The timing is gorgeous and so is the shot. A great trade from Can Can though. And they're just back and forth in the whole way until Smoggy got there. Can Can up towards long, closed the gap. Good retake this time. This is heartbreaking timing as well. Soon as it hits the 60 second mark, EDG go exploring. Munchkin just can't react quick enough to the turret. EDG will find the pistol here. I said I'm curious actually of how they do approach this defense towards Garage. And um, where actually Chi is going to prioritize the utility. See, lots of opportunities with the Cypher here to, to spread very thin, right? Have the spike cam on one side, have some mm. traps just to kind of secure the entrance to some sites. Looks like actually here might just be one towards Garage and allow a much deeper hold here, but wait for a full buy round to come through. Sire, let's throw a scope in here. Light shield as well. We'll spot nobody on the other side of things. T1 stacked up here. Munchkin does actually bring a sheriff into this. Okay. I mean, Sire play the bar was set quite high by what Kang Kang did on that first half with the marshal. Now, you might have a fair fight on one, but the second. Yeah, how do you dig not. nobody out of there? Yeah. Well, maybe. Like that! Like that! That's absolutely what? how you do it! Land the shot and now Smoggy called upon. And Smoggy's been really nasty already! Almost had them all. Not in this round though. Leaving a small chance here for T1 to do a little bit more. Weapon just switched over. No plant yet until now. So plant gonna go down. They do the best they can. Zeta, nah, not gonna happen. And Munchkin oh. overwhelmed. Good damage, couple of threats and a plant. So not the end of the one or the worst thing for T1 to walk away with. But EDG happy with the round. Yeah, Kang Kang just gets a freebie here. Wrapping into heaven. Yeah. Luckily, the cleanup comes through, but uh, I mean, ticking the box, right? Some damage done. Mm. They get the spike planted as well. An extra 300 in the bank for them. Oh, no. A beautiful opener from Sire. I've, 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 I think they're expecting this to just be a solo anchor mm. towards eight. They, they have no awareness that Smoggy's going to swing on from a, a very close position on default. Again, traditionally, you see that dash onto the, the right side to clear that area, but Sire actually paths back towards the left side. Michael, I'm seeing Kan Kan, and I'm seeing a whole lot of bodies on the other side. And a big gap between him and Chi Chu. There's the first. Sire player goes down. He falls away with almost no threat, and the three players on his team already start flooding through towards a long. Another. The readjust gorgeous just 50 HP, and he still wants more. The cage in place, so he gets a second of respite here as they close the gap. Another for Kang Kang. This guy is playing it perfectly. One by one, they face him, and one by one, they fell. There's no way you get away with that. This guy don't miss. Four kills on the round here. A chance to find the ace, but snatched away from him. EDG stamping some authority here on the second half. Again, a huge gap between him and Chi Chu, but the faith to leave Kang Kang on this island, again, slightest of margins in terms of the timings on the swings here from T1. Usually in that situation, it's like he stacked up. Yeah, an operator might get one, but you know, we all swing on to him, get the trade. It just doesn't come through for T1. I just love how well he was able to isolate them as well, just kind of divide and conquer, just gorgeous work. And it's kept T1. Basically, back down to very little. Sheriffs, Spectres, Marshals, trying to bring what they can in. And EGG get to start, you know, start really enjoying that little bit of pocket money they're building up here. Oh, better purchase. Couldn't ask for a better start in the second half now. 
As in nobody's turn here. He does have Smoggy not too far behind him, and Smoggy's been very good for it. They have to commit, and this time it ain't working. Ban does eventually take down nobody, but that does not mean you get past no uh, Smoggy here. Yeah, EDG very much in control. Even just Zeta. He does get how long, but the trade's there. So EDG comfortable in that round. A little bit threatening, but really, he weren't going to get past the last three. A four round gap. T1 need to answer back now. The finance is starting to swell for EDG. Even here, I'd say three off the Hunter's Fury, yes, but Bladestorm and Rolling Thunder available, and Kang Kang comfortably holding on to that operator. T1 will walk away again, a chance for a light shield purchase behind yeah. this, and very close to a lot of playmakers in terms of this ult cycle, but. This four play stack from EDG though. Four players over towards the A side, leaving full faith in Chichu to control and the pace from this man. The amount of control off this. It's huge. The spy cam holding down B as well. The smoke goes up now after they've cleared all this space outside A lobby, but T1 are going to miss the timing unless they're decisive here. Hard to be decisive when you're walking into the unknown as well. They have uh, well, now, yeah, after, after the first 45 seconds have passed, this. <laughs> There's a lot of question marks across the map here. EG have forced T1 into almost making a very desperate uh, decision, sorry. Maybe we start considering there's a flank in play, but uh, again, they, they just have so few answers. Pressure first noted towards Garage, really. They start to look towards C and C very little. Chichu finally gives away a little bit of that presence, expects on a swing from Garage, and he was right to feel as such, but keeps his life in. Zeta's got to be careful. Looking to maybe hunt him back. This is all on the flank here, and the plant's yet to go down. 30 seconds left. Got the Rolling Thunder available here. Zeta will find one, but Chichu will equalize. He has to back up Carpe. But he dips back in. Okay, here come those ridiculous trades, but there's nobody to double down. Munchkin holds it back from Garage, Whoa. tries to find one towards CD and does, leaving it all down to Style Player. Find it very weak and nobody trying to work their way through. T1 not out of it yet, but down to just one player. Again, this was the game plan all along from EDG. The utility basically covering C Long, Garage, and any Lurk onto B site. As four, EDG looked to clear on through eight. They find all the space, but convert it to nothing. The amount of ults T1 is. Well, I was going to say, yeah, with that round, T1 get everything online. They throw nothing into that, even as it comes online. They still got to chip away at the bank now. The bankroll of EDG, sorry. Kang Kang's got room to work here, and once again, Prince and Repeat run it on back. He's going to find Sire Player. He avoids all the utility, but he can't avoid Ban. Yes, he can! Dips away, and he's still standing! He's still doing damage! Ban's in the middle of CT, he's trying to find something further. Chichu's got him dead, and Kang Kang, how is he? How is he doing that? How is he doing that? I've never seen that. That is outrageous! <laughs> It's actually ridiculous. <laughs> How does he still flip that back in EDG's favor? Watch this again. Cool, that's that's nice. Already the fact that he's gone here after Bam was up towards, you know, up in heaven there. And then this. Um, I'm quitting. Uh, T1, I think, hitting the panic button here. A little bit of a tilt timeout called because... That was the round that with is, all the ults. They burnt three of them. Yeah, three get in. You got to argue even there if Munchkin had got down into sewers, he's probably looking to put the lockdown as well because things spinning or spiraling out of control so early on there. Like I said, it's another situation where the timing on the flash, then the swing through from Sire. I, I got to say, I just feel like that they're still not kind of respecting Kang Kang's ability to post up very deep and yep. land shot after shot. Well, I think they will now. Again, just reset back towards the, the vanilla Valorant, right? Zeta clear through with the drone, spot out the operator. It's a T1 aren't really, you know, catching their breath in the early round to really get a grip on identifying where Kang Kang is. And I, I'm, I've got to say it, when, when a jet is playing like this, you have to, you have to slow things down. The other thing as well, 
You're not seeing in the early round, you know, the other big objective versus the Cypher being remove some of the utility, right? Force yeah. an adjustment on the defense of EDG. It, it, you, I think you're right, actually, in phrasing that. I feel like I've just seen T1 being forced to play EDG's game rather than trying to maybe change the tune a little bit to something that suits them Look at the minimap. much better. <laughs> like, EDG can rotate so early here. And they go and walk about again. They have full control on this. It's so one-dimensional that T1 are trying to pull off here. The lockdown, yes, goes in, but they're already going to go hunting on it, and that's it gone. Can anyone defend it? No. It's instantly taken out of equation. Zeta gets away with a chance on this, and yeah, EDG, they have everyone there. That's 12, and T1 look lost here, Mike. Yeah, that felt a little desperate. Yeah, Munchkin, no support to reinforce the lockdown to make sure that it actually does clear out sight. And EDG, EDG with the perfect read. Like I said, G2, even here, 15 seconds into the round, nothing's spotted on the spy cam, there's no pressure towards utility. He's already rotating through. I think EDG's intention there is to deny the lockdown from the get-go. Yeah, a call for fundamentals for, for T1, and it's it's been absent here. Maybe taken out of their comfort by what we're seeing from EDG, but... And now, Can Can with another opportunity. On the other side is Ban, Sheriff. Not much more. <laughs> Munchkin just walking in, drifting into garage. T1, yeah, it feels like lacking a little bit of composure here. Kang Kang will find Ban, a 5v3 now. EDG with their sights set on closing Haven out. I said, I think EDG only losing 17 rounds on the defense so far this year on Haven. We're looking to try and maintain that sort of record here. Well, this one looks all but over, and it is 13 to 7 EDG. Fantastic form here from them. Got to say, Kang Kang to me, obvious standout here, but Mike, they shattered the mental of T1. Yeah, I, I feel like T1 just never really. And again, you talk about sometimes when a, when a team pulls out a, a, a quirky pick, right? An off meta pick. Yeah. There's almost like that lack of respect towards what you have to go back towards. The early round protocols need to change. That, we just didn't see that in the second half of T1. It was so difficult for them to really set up because Kang Kang was the one to disrupt the early round time and time again. EDG had total freedom across the map. I, it became so apparent towards the end of it, especially. I feel like there was a moment there where T1 were out of it mentally, if I'm honest, looking maybe towards map three, who knows, but certainly feeling the weight of what was done to them. And keep in mind, this was, what, round two? And we're already Thank seeing God, this. Man. He has had one of the most individually impactful games I've seen in a while, like it, it, a headlining sort of performance there in this map. Um, and again, that's also with Smoggy doing serious work too. And I'm not even just talking about his assisting work, his you know, ability to set up Kang Kang, but yeah, Smog firepower alone. Yeah, it was super class for EDG here. Yeah. I think as well, I mean, Zeta stepped up to the plate considering that map one performance being very quiet. Obviously, T1 still delivering in that regard, but... Yeah, maybe establishing a little more comfort here, getting into the groove of things. One enemy remaining. Yeah. Now, what well, we've got Pearl on the horizon, which... Uh, where do you put that sitting? Actually, if you don't mind me asking for you. I mean, it's hard to call here. This yeah. one, I, I think, lent towards... T1 needed to take map one. I think Haven yep. would comfortably sit with EDG. I, I, I guess maybe that's a little bit of bias towards a clean record. Sure, but sure. Pearl, for me, is a big question mark. Oh, how exciting. Map three, truly something that we get to find out together here. Do we get another Can Can performance? Do we get to see Sire player popping off? Ban having those clutch moments. What a beautiful matchup so far. Such a bloodbath in map one. Map two has been electric, and who knows what map three holds.